Dragon Ball Fighter Z is right around the corner. It's had alphas and betas, some not without their issues, but if you're looking forward to the game, here's all the info you need if you're not really caught up. These are 10 things you need to know about Dragon Ball Fighter Z. And real quick before we get started, consider following us on Discord. Discord.gg slash GameRanks gets you to our server where the video boys hang out, Falcon pops in for Q&A, and there's just tons of channels to give us suggestions, make friends, and talk about different games. Consider popping in and saying hi. But starting off at number 10, talking about all confirmed characters, this wouldn't be an awesome Dragon Ball fighting game unless we had a pretty awesome roster of characters to go along with it, right? I mean, look, a non-final number of roughly just over 20. You have your basic characters you'd expect to see, of course, like Goku, Gohan, Vegeta, Krillin, and Piccolo. Android 16, 17, and 18 pop up as well, with Android 17 and 18 being kind of like a dual character you're controlling both. Then there's Android 21, who's a brand new character created just for the game. You also get your baddies like Cell, Frieza, Kid and Innocent Boo, Captain Ginyu, you know, just to name a few, but you also get to play as Gotenks, Hit, Black Goku, and Beerus too, which would be probably pretty cool and exciting to play as. Just saying, because I haven't gotten my hands on him yet. Oh, and then there's also deeper cuts like Super Saiyan Blue Goku as well. There's definitely just a good roster of fighters to choose from here. It's a really nice mix of characters from all the better moments of the Dragon Ball timeline. Now next at number 9, let's talk about modes. In terms of different modes, you really aren't getting much, just your standard fighting game stuff to be honest. You get story mode, which is, uh, you know, where you play the story. Then there's also arcade mode, where you can take on certain challenges to earn zenny points, which can be spent on unlockables for different characters, like different items and color schemes and stuff like that. And when you finish all three courses arcade mode has to offer, you unlock hard mode, so you can do it all over again, but with a much harder difficulty. Then there's versus mode, which lets you go up against your friends locally too. Then of course there's the online modes, but we'll get to that in a bit. At number 8, let's dive a little deeper into the single player mode we did mention briefly. The story mode is introducing a new character, as we mentioned, Android 21 as the big bad guy. She somehow commissioned a ton of androids that mimic all of Goku's allies, so you're going to be playing as Goku, fighting off these android doppelgangers across three acts as you try to figure out what Android 21 and the somehow revived Android 16 are trying to accomplish. It seems like this definitely takes place after Dragon Ball Z, and, and solely going on what some characters look like, a, a lot of the Dragon Ball Online community thinks that this takes place after the Future Trunks saga and right before the Universe Survival Saga begins. It looks like that single player is just you selecting which stage you're going to hit next, doesn't look like there's anything between fights and story beats, but it is worth mentioning that it does look like they're trying, there's really good cutscenes and lots of memorable moments and callbacks to the show, so I'm in. Now at number 7, we do have some details on how the online modes will work. You have circle match mode, which will host up to 8 fighters in a single lobby to fight against one another, with up to 4 matches going on at the same time, which is pretty slick. Then just like every other video game, you also have the ability to choose between ranked and casual matches through what is called world mode. The modes really are simple here for online, but hopefully effective. It is also worth knowing that one of the more recent betas was plagued with connection issues, but it seems like the developers are aware as they are hosting another last minute test beta before the game releases. We, ju we just really hope this game gets its shit together in time. But that remains to be seen. Next at number 6, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has a lot of esports talk around it, but we won't know what the future holds just yet. Skip this one if esports and tournaments aren't really your thing. But when speaking with Twitch last year, the game's producer Tomomi Hiroki described that part of the reason for the game's switch to more traditional 2D fighting with 2.5D graphics was for both mainstream and fighting game community appeal. Stylistically, it made sense for the game based on hand-drawn art, but the 2D shift was also for the game to be easy to watch, understand, pick up, and get into. It'll no doubt definitely still be a challenging game judging from what we've seen and played, but they wanted it to be embraced by the same crowds that embrace and watch Street Fighter. In talking about the animation style and the gameplay style, he said and I quote, we tried to merge these two elements that were really a match made for each other. The game still has to release and catch on, but thanks to what does seem like a lot of excitement around fans, some tournament organizers have already taken notice like Burst League and CEO Taku. Not to mention some fans are already organizing launch tournaments on Reddit and stuff like that too. Now at number 5, let's talk about how the fighting goes down. Dragon Ball Fighter Z will have a 3v3 fighting mechanic similar to Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, which does make it a bit more of a complex fighting game, especially at least more than it looks. This is what makes it seem really fast and chaotic. So there's way more to it seeing as how you're juggling multiple characters and strengths and weaknesses and swapping them in and out. Here you'll have to worry about having 3 health bars, so say if Krillin is getting his ass beat, he could tag out with Vegeta, and while Krillin is on the sidelines, his health will regenerate. So you're going to want to tag in and out accordingly with your fighter's health, obviously. You can also call in assists 
assist from your sideline fighters. You can also do delayed hyper combo where you can input the combo to your sideline fighters super while you're doing your super and then the other fighter will jump on screen with you for a real powerful combo. It gets crazy. Let, let's get to how you use meter stuff in our next point at number four where we detail controls and moves a little bit more. We can't go over every single button press but control wise you have a few different moves at your disposal. You have basic, light, medium, and heavy attacks that you have in every other fighting game. You also have a special attack and a key charge that will charge up your energy gauge. Then there's the really cool vanish that will immediately move you behind your opponent so you can attack from behind. Super dash helps you get closer to your enemy while avoiding key blasts. And then there's sparking blasts which will increase your power and regenerate your health but only for a limited amount of time. This is something you can't activate often, so you have to make sure you use it wisely. Then lastly, for the more complicated stuff, we have Z Assist, Z Change, and Ultimate Z Change. Z Assist calls in one of your two sideline fighters in for an assist. Z Change lets you tag in and out of your other fighters, and then Ultimate Z Change launches your super attack, but with the help of your sideline fighters. I know that's a lot, but fighting games in general can usually get pretty complicated, but once you throw in the insanity that is Dragon Ball into it all, it has to get much more complicated and intense, but that's kind of why we're into it. At number three, speaking of other levels of complication, another element you have to be aware of is the Shenron system. This is when players string a specific number of combos together during a battle, specifically a, a full light auto combo. Uh, they'll collect on-screen Dragon Balls. If a player is good enough to collect all of them and fulfill the very specific requirements of being the first player to land the eighth combo and also have a full meter, Shenron will actually appear on screen mid-battle and grant the player a wish, just kind of like the show. They can choose from a couple different things like having the character's health fully restored having an ally revive to 50% health, boosting your key meter with a sparking burst unit, or have health be 50% restored with an auto restoration for energy gauge. Shout out to Maximilian Dude on YouTube for getting to the bottom of that. Now next up at number two, we need to talk about how good this game looks. I mean, come on. When I'm looking at the gameplay, I can't tell if I'm watching the game or watching the show because that's how freaking good it looks. The dev team did an amazing job making this look like Dragon Ball Z. And not just cosmetically, but the way it plays too. It's worth noting that it does run at 60 FPS. Xenoverse and Budokai do a good job at replicating the intense fighting the show is known for, but not like not like this. Th this shit looks bananas. Part of it probably has to do with the fact that Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama was actually part of the game's development. He, he may not have a, a huge hand in it, but the small impact he did clearly shows. The new character that was made for the game that we mentioned, Andrew Android 21 was actually designed by Toriyama himself, who, by the way, I am really excited to see just because the androids were always awesome. Now finishing up at number one, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Dragon Ball Fighter Z will launch on January 26th on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. There's a few different versions of the game releasing if you care about this stuff. There's the standard base version, the Fighter Z edition, which comes with the Fighter Z Pass, which will give you access to eight new DLC characters. Then there's the Ultimate Edition that comes with the Fighter Z Pass, the Commentator Voice Pack, and the Anime Music Pack, which has 11 songs from the anime. Then there's the Collector Z Edition, which comes with three art prints, an exclusive steelbook, and a really awesome seven inch statue of Super Saiyan Goku. That's of course if you love DBZ and you wanna spend a lot of money, more power to you. I'm a little more cynical than that, but hey. There's also going to be a PS4 Pro and an Xbox One support, we do know that, but even with the game's release coming next week, we really don't know exactly what the support is going to do. Don't expect much because the playing field does have to be level for competitive play, but either way, we're just looking forward to getting our hands on the game on January 26th. So those are some things that you need to know. We broke down Dragon Ball Fighter Z for you guys. If you are super hardcore, there's probably a lot more to talk about. So we wanna hear from you guys down in the comments. If you're a casual person looking on, if there's anything else you wanna know, feel free to ask us in the comments or anybody else commenting because the hype seems pretty real for this game. I don't know about you guys, but if you did enjoy this video, clicking the like button does help us out. And if you're new, you should subscribe because we put out stuff like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. and We'll see you guys next time.